In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, all God's people said, Father, we just thank you for the second coming. We thank you for all the words and the notices that you've given us. We thank you for your word, which is true. And now it seems with the intensity of life, it seems your presence is very much coming. May we look up and know that our salvation draws nigh. May no one, absolutely no one who's listening be afraid in any shape, form, or size, but may we be comforted in the fact that you're coming to rescue your church. Bless our holy pastors, bless our holy bishops, and fill us with the great power of your spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all God's people said, Amen. Now, I, I've been tying this in a lot with the uh, book of Second Thessalonians, which says there has to be what is called the apostasy. Everybody remember what the word apostasy means? When you look at John 16, 1 to 3, in John 16, it says, there will be a great falling away. When you look at the gospel of John, there's no tons of information on the second coming because the Holy Spirit used him to write the whole book of Revelation. You got that? So we can see now, and I was just watching two Catholic authors down uh, on the TV, on the YouTube, and they believe that Jesus is coming. You might have heard of them. Mark Mallet is one of them. Okay, believing that <coughs> Jesus is coming. So let's finish the discussion. We left off, just, I should have did these two verses. And then I want to start a new, a new series with you tonight on how to be healed in your inside man and your inside woman. I'm going to give you specific information, and you better follow it. Amen? I will save you all your psychiatry bills right away. Amen? Amen? So um, I, I believe the best uh, book for psychiatry in the world is the Bible. What we need to do is we need how to think biblically. When you think biblically, you're set free. All right, chapter 13 with me, saints. We left off on verse 32, that little section 32 to the end, 37. We're like on the last three verses. Amen. So he says, but of the day of the hour, no one knows, not even the angels. Remember, we gave that discussion. The angels don't know when the end of time is. So don't bother asking them. They don't know. Amen. Nor the son. I gave you the two possibilities for that. Uh, is it because Jesus is in his humanity? and the father kept them from that? Or my answer is number two, he knew, but he was not privileged to say. The reason why for me, I, I have to take that stance, is because Jesus is God from God, life from light, true God from true God. So Jesus, God knows everything front, center, and backwards. So I believe Jesus knew. And next he says, but only the father in heaven. We, we did all this last night. Verse 33, take heed, watch, and pray. We have given you a lot of information on the idea of watching. Watching is with your B&H camera, you got to aim it toward the sky, and then you got to make sure, number one, that the vineyard is taken care of. Remember the vineyard, Psalm 80? You got to make sure the enemy is not coming after you. Amen. So um, take heed, watch, for you do not know the time. And then the enemy, too, is to be vigilant. Uh, even though I hope and pray in your life, there's many good um, days ahead for everybody. There's peace and there's joy and there's prosperity, even for Joseph getting out on the golf course one more time. So take heed, watch, for you do not know the time will come if everybody circles the word time. The word time comes in two varieties. Let me spell them for you. One time is called the uh, uh, Kairos, K-A-I-R-O-S, Kairos. And that means the quality time when everything is going to be ready. Now, when we all go to heaven, Lord willing, 
We're all going into the eternal now. Okay, there'll be no, as soon as you're dead, they usually give you a time when you left, uh, a literal time, but there's going to be no watches in glory. Either you're going to pass through the mercy of God, or you're going to pass through the judgment of God. Please, God, that each of us pass through the door of mercy. So the time will come, the kairos will, will come. And the other word in, in, in the Bible for time is chronos. See? H R O N O S. The Kronos will come. It is like a man going on a journey. How many know you're all on a journey? Now, please do not be upset with life. You know why? Because it doesn't, you don't belong to this earth. How many know a lot of people are upset, nervous? scared, worried, fearful, that's the big word right now, because they think this is it, and how am I gonna spend the rest of my life? We say in Brooklyn, forget about it. You don't belong to this world, you got a heavenly place, amen? Since this corona started, I have not ever panicked about getting it, amen? Let me tell you something, I don't believe in it, amen? So I said, you get off me, you spirit of Corona. I thought you were only a beard. Now you're disguising yourself as a disease. So it is like uh, the, we're going into a Kairos moment when everything will be before God. Verse 34, it is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home, puts his servants in charge. How many know that uh, the idea of the servant, what Jesus spent a whole day during Holy Week teaching about the kingdom of God and putting his servants in. Now there's going to be a separation from the, uh, from the goat and the sheep. The servants there, if you underline the word servants, the, the word servants is called adulos. D-O-U-L-O-S. So the doulos, we're all servants. And if you want to read a great scripture on that, how we're all in charge, please read 1 Corinthians 4. If you and I are found trustworthy as his servants, he will give us more when we go to glory. Each with his work, so you're all going to have your work uh, um, uh, before you, and commands of the doorkeeper to be on the watch. We did a, a lot about the doorkeeper and the door last night. And, and so the command you got to watch because why are we watching? Because everything is okay, but how many know the enemy is sneaking around the corner? The first time that the enemy sneaks around the corner is shown to us in Genesis chapter four, verse seven. And it comes very quietly and the enemy wants to do one thing to everybody here. He wants to pounce upon you. Now, I want to tell you the most difficult part of your day. When you look at verse 35, watch. Everybody say watch. Watch therefore, for you do not know when the master of the house will come. Now, the master of the house, of course, is the Lord. We say the word master is how many ever heard this word before? Despotes. D-E-S. P-O. T. Despotes. T-A-T-E-S. Despotes. So they would call the master despotes. It sounds like the word what? Despot. So you do not know when the master of the house will come. Now, one, two, three, look at the four times. Evening, midnight, cock crow, or in the morning. So the evening right there is between nine to 12. So everybody put the evening, nine to 12. 
9 to 12. Now midnight is 12 to 3. Now this is the most difficult time for us as you get older. Anybody over 40? Nobody. I'm still young. When you're over 40, uh, it's difficult sometimes to go to bed. Or you're up a lot during the night. Midnight to 3 is the hour of satanic attack the most. Between 12 and 3. Amen? Between 12 and 3. So the, the next time then is the cock crowing. How many know somebody famous with the cock crowing? Did you ever hear St. Peter? When the cock crows. So now Peter is, uh, what hour was that between? Three to six. So Peter heard that within that time period. And the time period three to six would be the time that the women were on the way to the tomb. And then he has another time period there, he says, or you can, um, in the morning. Now that's not one of the four watches, but here note, notice that Jesus says, or in the morning. I have a personal conviction, um, just a belief. I believe, brothers and sisters, I believe in the sense, uh, in verse 35, that the Lord's coming between 12 and 3. I believe because, of, if I understand scripture correctly, I believe he's coming at the midnight hour. It's just a personal reflection. No one has defined it. And then there could be a chance with the cock crowing because what is there? It's darkest before the what? The dawn. Now that summer is here, I can hear the birds chirping outside. And they're, 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 they, they make noise outside my window. They say, get up. I said, it's only quarter to five. Go back to bed. So now notice the cock crowing is the time, the darkest before the dawn or in the morning when everything is bright and fresh and starting anew. So we don't know when he's coming back. But in Matthew chapter 25, Jesus gives us some parables on stay awake, watch. The master's coming back. Verse 36, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. Now, asleep doesn't mean sleeping. Asleep means you're not paying attention to the things of God. Now, when we all die, if, we all, if anybody here dies before the soon second coming, what you need to do with me, brothers and sisters, is to make sure that every day is a preparation day. When I had the good Benedictine nuns, those were the days when nuns were nuns. They'd always tell me to say my act of contrition. To this very day, a hundred years later, I still say my act of contrition. Amen. I want to, if I don't make it through the night, I want to go safely into God, God's arms. Do I hear amen? Now, he says there, so find a sleep is also, number two, finding a sleep is a term for every Christian to say you died. Did you know as Christians, you never say to one another, they're dead. Amen. I remember visiting Melissa up in the North Country there when her mom passed away into glory. Amen. So now you don't, you just say they fell asleep in the Lord. Doesn't that sound a whole lot better? So what happens to us when it's our time to go home, if it's not during the second coming time, we're just going to fall asleep in the Lord. Amen. So may we be awake for what's going on in the world. So I have my Bible in one hand 
and I watch the news to find out what's going on. And finally, in verse 37, and what I say to you all, watch. So how many times there does Jesus say watch? Do you think it's a lot? Look, look, look there, how many times, and just that's, that short saying, three times. Watch, watch, watch. Now, why is he saying it three times? How many watches can he come in? If he doesn't come in the first watch, what are you supposed to do in the second watch? Watch. If he doesn't come in the second, second time, what are you going to do? You wait for the third watch. So you have watch, watch, watch. And if he doesn't come in the first, second, third watch, that means he's really coming because all the watches are gone. So you got to, you're already up. So, so that's why we have that one word there. Watch. Pay attention. It's time. It's absolutely time. Do I hear amen?